Let everybody be seated, please. You may proceed, Ms. Kaplan. <coughs> When we broke, I was asking you whether you recalled um, having a meeting where you listened to some phone calls, the recorded phone calls from this case, to identify the voices. Do you remember that? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to approach with what I've marked as state 179. Do you recognize this sheet? Yes, ma'am. And is this your initial here? Yes, ma'am. All right. And what about these check marks? What do these check marks indicate? The voices. All right. So on each of these letter phone calls, were you able to authenticate <coughs> the voices that are highlighted? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So for example, on call D, you were asked to listen oh, to see if that's... Objection, Your Honor. She doesn't move this into evidence. Yes, ma'am. Overruled. Overruled. So for example, on call D, you were asked to identify the voice of... There's two voices on there. And you were asked to identify the one that's highlighted, correct? Yes, ma'am. And does the check mark indicate that you were able to identify the, uh, yes, the highlighted voice? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And on these calls, such as call K, there are two names highlighted there, Katie and Garcia. Does the check mark indicate you were able to authenticate both of those voices? Yes, ma'am. All right. And the ones that have check marks by um, Katie, is that referencing Catherine Magbanua? Yes, ma'am. So that was her voice on the call? Yes, ma'am. And the ones that have Garcia, that's referencing Sigredo Garcia's voice? Yes, ma'am. Right. And all the check marks indicate that you have authenticated those voices on those particular calls? Yes, ma'am. Right, judge, at this time I'd ask to introduce state 179. Is there a objection? Yes, Your Honor. First, I've never been shown what Ms. Catherine Money is referring to, and I just want to go sidebar and make my other objections. Improper foundation. Look, we'll go side <clears throat> Mr. Rivera, I don't think I asked you what is your nickname if you have one? Tato. Tato? Yeah. All right. And I want to take you back for a moment to the first trip to Tallahassee. Did Mr. Garcia engage in any phone calls with Ms. Magvanoa during that first trip to Tallahassee? I can't remember. Do you remember giving a proffer in this case on October 4th, 2016? Yes, ma'am. And do you remember giving some statements about um, Garcia having a lot of phone contact with Ms. Magbanoa on that first trip? Sustain. I'm going to approach and show you the transcript of that offer. Ask you to read the question and answer. Are you able to read no. very well on the camera? Can't read, can't write. All right. Judge. I'll ask for some guidance on that. I don't right, give I don't guidance. Know. I don't give guidance, Ms. Okay, Kaplan. Okay, well, the question is, right, how do you know so that? I'm going to object to this. It's happening in front of us. Sustained. All right. Uh, Move on, Ms. Kaplan. Yes, sir. Do you have any recollection of... Um, any conversation, overhearing any conversation in which Ms. Magbana, well, Ms. Magbanwa was concerned about you and Mr. Garcia doing something stupid or messing it up? Can't remember. Okay. Do you remember any conversation that you were privy to where Mr. Garcia was telling Ms. Magbanwa to make sure those people have the money? Yeah. When was that? That was that uh, Friday after the murder happened. Okay. Were there other conversations that happened on the first trip where the money was discussed? No. You don't remember Mr. Garcia telling Ms. McVanawa that they better have the money? No, I don't remember. Okay. Slide forward a little bit more. I think you've got it back up a little bit. I'm way in the mic. 
Do you remember any conversation where Ms. Magbanawa was indicating to Mr. Garcia where you could hear her saying, make sure you get everything done right. When you are done, call me. Yes. When was that? That was the second trip. We was trying to um, murder the guy. And were you a member of this conspiracy to accomplish the murder of Mr. Markell? Not at all. You didn't have anything to do with it? I mean, um, and yeah, he told me about it to go, but if you're saying if I got hired, no. Well, you got paid, didn't you? Yeah, from Garcia. All right, so Garcia hired you to do a murder, didn't he? Yes, ma'am. And who hired him? The um, Addison family. I'm sorry? The Wendy family. Wendy's family hired him? Yeah. Okay, yeah. and how was Wendy's family connected to Sigfredo Garcia? Because Katie. Katie was um, daddy, um, dating the dentist. Okay. Did Katie know about the murder? Yes, ma'am. Did Katie have a role in hiring Sigfredo Garcia? Yes, ma'am. How do you know that? Because he told me. And Katie got paid? Yes, ma'am. Objection of deleting. Sustained. Do you know which member of the Adelson family? Do you know? Did you have any contact with any no, member of the Adelson family? Did any member of the Adelson family ever pay you any money? No, ma'am. Did you ever have any phone calls with any member of the Adelson no, family? No, ma'am. Text messages? No. Nope. Meetings? No. Nope. Any other type of communication? Not at all. Do you see the person in the courtroom that you say hired Sigfredo Garcia to do this homicide? The only one I see is Katie. All right. Would you please point her out and describe what she's wearing? She's wearing on gray and black. Let the record reflects the witness Ms. has Captain, identified. Would you, would you put your hand down, please, Ms. Kepp? The witness it has makes identified. It hard to hear you. Sir? Makes it hard to hear you when you've got your hand up around yes, your mouth. Yes, sir. The witness has identified... Defendant Magbanawa, no further questions. Cross. Just give me a second to set up, Your Honor. Certainly. If I may proceed, Judge. You may. Thank you, Judge. Good afternoon, Mr. Rivera. Good afternoon. Do you have any aliases other than your full legal name as Luis Rivera? Yeah, Tato. What about King Tato? Yeah, King Tato. And where is the nickname King Tato derived from? King is from Latin King. And Tato is my nickname since I was a baby. You're a Latin King legacy, right? Yeah. And I say that because you were born into being a Latin King, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And by being born into this organization, um, that means that you had family members that were part of the organization. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Direction, relevance. If I can explain, if I can explain sidebar, Judge, it goes to material. Proceed. And Mr. Rivera, what was your title with uh, the North Miami tribe of the Latin Kings uh, when you got arrested in this case? This case right here? Or the federal case? I was a leader. Now, 
correct me if I'm wrong, but there's five designations of leaders in the Latin King organization, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. There, there are certain crowns, correct? There's like a fifth crown, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, is that called the secretary? Yes, sir. There's a fourth crown, which is called the treasurer. Yes, sir. There's a third crown, which is called the enforcer. Yes, sir. There's a second crown that's called, I can't pronounce it, it's C-A-C-I-Q-U. Sacique. Okay. And then there's the Inca or the Primera, the first crown, correct? Yes, sir. And that's where you were? Yes, sir. The first crown of the North Miami tribe of the Latin Kings, correct? Yes, sir. And in addition to being a local organization, well, it's not just a local organization, is that correct? Yes, sir. There's Latin Kings throughout the state of Florida, is that correct? Yes, sir. And in, in addition to the state of Florida, I believe there's 39 states in the United States where the Latin kings have a presence. Is that correct? Yes, sir. At the time of, uh, of, of this incident in 2014, how old were you, sir? I think 32. 32. And you had been the Inca, or the first crown of the North Miami tribe since you, were in your, since you were about 15 or 16, is that correct? Yes, sir. How many members of the North Miami tribe were there in 2014? I mean, that's a question for real. I'm sorry, sir? That's a serious question. Uh, I, I'm asking it. That can be a lot, no doubt. How many, if you remember, as the leader of this North Miami tribe, how many members of the Latin Kings were part of the North Miami tribe in 2014? Probably had like a hundred. A hundred. Probably. Does that include all of Miami or is that just North Miami? That's just North Miami. So including Miami, that number goes up. Is that correct? Of course. And as we move exponentially north and west and a little bit south, the numbers increase, correct? Yes, sir. Would you agree with me that there is a Latin King presence in Key West? Yeah. Broward County? Yes. Tampa? Everywhere. Okay. Everywhere, right? Yes, sir. Well, I'm going to ask some specifics, and I apologize for cutting you off, but I just need to make sure I get my questions out. So St. Petersburg, yes? Yes. Because that's part of everywhere, right? Yes, sir. Naples, correct? Yes, sir. Jacksonville? Yes. What about here in Tallahassee? I don't know. Oh, you don't know? Don't Isn't know. Tallahassee part of everywhere? Yeah, but I don't, I don't associate people in Tallahassee. Never been in Tallahassee in my life. So just so I'm clear, when I asked you if there's that Latin... That usually means you're going to repeat a question. Let's not repeat, Mr. Sanginet. So out of all the places in Florida that have Latin Kings, the only place that you're not aware if they have Latin Kings is here in Tallahassee. Is that your testimony? Yeah, I mean, they got them, but I don't know nobody from Tallahassee. So now, now you're saying that they have them, but you don't they know them, them personally, correct? They got them, but I don't know nobody in Tallahassee. Well, do you think that they know you? Maybe. Okay, and that's because you're a leader in a substantially sized tribe of the, of the Latin Kings. Is that correct? Yeah, they don't know me, but they, know my, they probably know my name. So could you pick up a phone and call somebody and get information on somebody that's associated with the Latin Kings in, let's say, Jacksonville. Could you do that? If you're the leader, of course. Okay. And you were a leader, right? Yes, sir. So what about, could you pick up the phone and find out, find out if there's people in Gainesville? You could do that as a leader, right? Yes, sir. Everywhere, right? Everywhere. Okay. Because in addition to being a local organization, it's a statewide and national organization, correct? Yes, sir. And you've been a leader of this organization pretty much your entire adult life, correct? Yes, sir. How do you, how do you become, what do you need to do to become a Latin king? I was born into it. What about, how do you, get, what is your definition of gangbang? Gangbang? Yes, sir. Latin king is a family. First and foremost, a family. 
There's an organization that everybody take care of everybody. You take care of the neighborhood. Do you recall if I ever asked you what were the things you had to do to become a Latin king? Do you recall that? Yeah. Do you recall what your answer was? No, I don't remember. If I show you a copy... You got to read it. Of, of, I got to read it? Yeah, I can't read. Well, let me ask you this. Did you tell me on October, I'm sorry, on January 31st, 2018, that to get an initiated to the gang, you had just gang banged? Does that sound about right? Yes, sir. And would it be safe to say that when I asked you to expand on what gang banging means, you said surviving life. Does that sound about right? Yes, sir. Does that include selling drugs? Everything, I guess. Okay. Did you sell drugs? Yes, sir. I got to survive. And you did this to take care of your family, correct? Yes, sir. And to take care of the nation, right? Yes, sir. And when I say the nation, I'm discussing the Latin King Nation, correct? Yes, sir. Now, would proceeds from your illegal activity go back to the organization? Repeat that question again? Sure, no problem. Would the proceeds... What proceeds mean? Proceeds, like the money you make. Okay. Okay? If, if there's ever a time where I ask a question that you don't understand what I'm saying, let me know. I and I'll clarify just so I'll make sure that everybody's on the same page, all I'm right? I'm doing it right now, sir. I'm sorry? I said I'm doing it right now. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. So proceeds means what money you make. So the money you made from your illegal activity, did you give it back to the nation? It's a treasure. You put money in a treasure. Okay. So the answer is yes. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> now, to your knowledge, Is there a, like a manual or a book that your organization uses that has rules in it? Yes, sir. And does it go by the initials KMC? Yes, sir. You tell the members of the jury what those initials stand for. You said KMC? Yes, sir. It's, it's A, KMC, Amor de, Amor de Rey. Okay. I'm sorry. I can't. I can barely understand what you're saying. Can you say that a little bit louder, sir? Amor de Rey. Okay. And is that, in, is, that a, is that English or another language? That's Spanish. Okay. And hence the name Latin Kings, correct? Latin Kings. And even though you can't read or write, can you translate from English to Spanish? Yes, sir. Okay. Can you tell the members of this jury from English to Spanish what that means? That means um, um, almighty. <laughs> almighty love. Almighty love. And that's your rule book, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Have you ever heard it uh, initialized as KMC? Yes, sir. And do you know what? Well, let me let me let me ask it this way: Is there a portion in that with with regards to a code of silence that your gang has to to, to abide by? Yes, sir. So one of the principles that's in your rule book is that whatever activity you do within your organization should maintain within that organization. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And whatever activity that you do, if it's illegal, you're not supposed to talk about it, correct? Of course. Okay. Now, according to your book, the KMC, is there a punishment or a violation that one receives if you provide information against another Latin king? What do you mean by that? So let's say a, a buddy of yours, one of your brothers, let's call him King Anthony, okay? Let's say King Anthony did a crime and you helped the prosecution or you helped the police prosecute him. Would that be a violation according to your rule book? Objection, relevance, and hypothetical. Overruled. Go ahead, sir. Of course. What would be your punishment? I'm going through it right now. They're trying to kill me. They're going to try to kill you? Yeah. 
So you'll agree with me that cooperating against a fellow king would result in probably the most serious penalty that you can have in your manifesto, correct? Of course. Loss of your life. Yes, sir. Now, you have a tattoo designating your allegiance to your organization, correct? Yes, sir. And that's on your stomach? Yes, sir. And it's the five points or the five points of the crown, is that correct? Yes, sir. And you still have that tattoo? Yes, I do. Are you still a member of the Latin Kings? No. Nope. When did you lose your membership? When I went back to Coleman, back to the feds. Okay. 2016. When in 2016? Right when I came over here to cooperate. So at the beginning of your cooperation, which I would say late September, early October, does that sound about right, sir? Yeah. You lost your affiliation because you violated one of the rules in your Latin King Manifesto. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Are you in general population at Coleman? I'm sorry. You're, let me ask the question this way. Where, where are you currently housed? Um, Arizona. Okay. And that's in a federal facility? Yes, sir. And as the prosecution said, you are currently serving a 151-month sentence based on your agreement to plead guilty in a federal racketeering case. Is that yes, correct? Sir. Yes, sir. And do you know what, do you know what racketeering, sorry. I apologize. Strike that question. And so as part of your federal sentence, you have been designated, designated by the Bureau of Prisons, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And your designation in the Bureau of Prisons is in a federal facility in Arizona, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, for, you'll agree with me that for uh, inmates, that they're concerned for their safety and welfare, there's a special portion of the federal facility that they can put you in, right? Yes, sir. And that's called the SHU, right? Yes, sir. And the SHU stands for a special housing unit, right? Yes, sir. Are you currently in the shoe? Not right now. Okay. When you say not right now, I, I see that you're here in Leon County, right? Yes, so sir. when you met not right now, prior to them bringing you over here, when's the last time you were in the shoe? In Leon County. I'm sorry? In Leon County. In Leon County. When you were in federal custody, were you ever in special housing? Yes, sir. Okay. What about in Arizona? The Arizona, the prison I'm in, is called a job by yard. What is called a PC, protected custody. That's what they got me at right now. So, are you in special housing in your federal facility? No. You're in general population, correct? Yes, sir. Have they had this by they? Well, let me let me rephrase that. You indicated earlier that. If you testified against the Latin King, you they they try to kill you, correct? Testify against anybody. Well, I'm asking you testifying against the Latin King. I think you answered your question. This thing, and do you have another question? Yes, Judge. What is a KOS order? KOS. Yes. KOS. Right. Kill on sight. Kill on sight. Are you familiar with that? I just said it, sir. Have you ever given a KOS order? No. During your, you're aware that at some point between September and November, the U.S. government put a wire intercept on your federal indictment investigation on your phone. Is that correct? Yeah, they got caught. Yeah, I know. And what I'm asking you is this. You know that the feds had you wired up for a month. Yeah, I found out. Okay. And you found out because, like in any criminal investigation, one of the things that they do is 
they show you the evidence that they have against you, right? Yes, sir. And you'll agree with me that in your federal investigation, you learned that for 30 days, the federal government listened to every one of your phone calls. Is that correct? Yes, sir. In October 2014, did you have, as a Latin king, an issue with members of the 400 gang that moved into Highland Village? Yes, sir. And in, Octo in late October of 2014, did you, Luis Rivera, initiate a series of phone calls asking for assistance from fellow Latin King gang members? Do you yes, recall doing that? And do you recall that what you initially wanted to do or what you asked your fa fellow Latin Kings, your brothers, to do was to get armed up and come and help you deal with these other gang members. Is that correct? Action, relevance. Sustained. Have you ever been involved, other than the case that we're talking about, have you ever been involved in the distribution of narcotics? Objection, relevance. May I inquire, Judge? You may. Mr. Rivera, did you sell drugs in the year 2012? Yes, sir. What drugs did you sell in the year 2012? Weed and cocaine. Did you sell drugs in the year 2013? Probably my whole life. So would it be fair to say that from your teenage years up until your arrest, you were involved in the distribution of narcotics? Yes, sir. And I know this because we've spoken about it. It was initially just weed, right? Yes, sir. And as you got older, you started selling powder, right? Have you ever committed an armed robbery? Yes, sir. Do you remember ever giving me an answer different than that? I can't remember. Now, you said that you can't, you can't read or write, correct? Yes, sir. Do you know the difference between the words yes and no? <laughs> yes, sir. May I approach, Judge? He, it's he said he can't read. I'm not, you're not going to give him something to read. Sir. Judge, it's just a different shape between the words yes and no. No. Proceed. Do you recall taking a deposition with me in January, on January 31st, 2018? Yes, sir. Okay. And during that deposition, I was there, Ms. Kaplan was there? Yes, sir. And there was a person that's called a court reporter that was taking notes of what you were saying? Yes, sir. Judge, I'm going to refer to line 22 and 23. I asked you, have you ever committed an armed robbery? And your answer was no. Now, today, when I ask you that, your answer is now yes. The question is you. Recall that question and that answer. Do you recall that question and that impeachment? Do you recall that question and answer? I can't remember. Once again, Your Honor, I would ask to be able to show the, the witness. Move on, Mr. Singer. So you indicated you have committed armed robberies, right? Yes, sir. And you gave a statement to law enforcement uh, I believe October 4th. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought you were through with your question. No, Judge. On October 4th, 2016, you remember that? Let me kind of refresh your recollection. You're sitting there. You got your lawyer, Mr. Collins, to your right. Uh -huh. You got Detective Isom on your left, and you got an FBI investigator, Mr. Sanford, directly in front of you. I got my lawyer who to my right? Chuck Collins. I think it was David Collins. Oh, so you do remember? 
Yeah. Okay. I'm is trying David, to refresh my memory too. Is David the older or the younger gentleman? David is the father. Is the father. Okay. So you got David Collins to your right. Do you remember that? Yeah. Okay. And you're sitting at a table, right? <clears throat> and did they, are you, you remember that they told you that they videotaped the, the interview, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So would it sound about right that this whole videotaped statement that you gave on October 4th, 2016, in the presence of your lawyer, with Detective Isom, Detective Stanford, took about two hours long. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. And do you also remember that during that videotaped statement, um, you made, you called yourself a jack boy. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. Okay. What's a jack boy? A jack boy is a rob drug dealers. Rob drug dealers. Now, when you rob a drug dealer, do you rob them on the streets? Or do you go to their house? Go to their house and take their dope. Because drug dealers don't keep their dope out of the streets. It's usually stashed somewhere in their house, right? Yes, sir. So I'm going to ask serious questions with regards to these. I mean, do you knock on the door and say, excuse me, can I have your drugs? Does it work like that? No. So would it be fair to say that when you go in there, you have the intention to either use force or intimidate by using of the, or intimidate with the use of force. Yes, sir. Okay. And would it be a fair statement to say that you do this while you're armed? Yes, sir. Okay. And what would be the weapon that you would most likely use during a robbery of a drug dealer? A handgun. Okay. And what happens if you go in and you ask you? Well, let me ask you a question. Do you knock on the door or do you kick down the door? I knock on the door. You knock on the door? Yeah. Okay. And when they open the door, what do you do? You give me everything. Okay. And do you set up surveillance before you do these robberies? No. No. Okay. So do you care whether or not if there's kids in the house when you're committing an armed robbery of a, of a, of a drug dealer? I do care if there's kids in the house. And when I do rob somebody, there's no kids in the house. But you just told me you don't do surveillance. So how do you know? Because there ain't going to be no kids in the house. I, I we know the guy we're going to rob. That's it. You know the guy that you're going to rob. Yeah. But yet you didn't do any surveillance, right? And, ain't no kids in the house. So you're telling me every time you hit a drug dealer, you knew whether or not that there were kids in the house because you have those moral standards? Yes, sir. I never hit nobody with no kids in no house. And you're saying that under oath to this jury? Yes, sir. And you understand what being under oath is, correct? Go ahead. Um, explain to me. I mean, at the beginning, you raised your right hand. You swore to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And I'm sure as your lawyer has advised you, there is a penalty for lying under oath, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Have you ever lied under oath? No. That's not a proper question. Well, let me ask you a question. Do you recall when you pled guilty in federal court, there was a document called a factual proffer. Do you recall that? Yeah, I heard. May I approach, Judge? Oh. May I approach, Your Honor? Purpose is it to show somebody can't read the written document, Mr. Sangam? Judge, it's got his initials on it. It has his signature. All right. It's got a date. Okay, go ahead. Mr. Rivera, I'm showing you what's been marked as Defense Exhibit 2. Well, we already have a Defense Exhibit 2, unless we're going to do <coughs> separate documents for. Garcia. It's under Garcia, Judge. I apologize. It's, it's been marked as Garcia number two. Do you want me to change that, Your Honor? That, that'll be okay for now. We can discuss that later. Now, you indicated that you can't read, but you know what your name looks like, right? Of course. Whose name is that right there? My name. Okay. Is that your signature in the bottom right-hand corner? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, your initials? Yes, sir. On page one? Are these your initials on page two? Yes, sir. Are these your initials on page three? Yes, sir. 
Are these your initials on page four, sir? Yes, sir. And whose signature is that? Mine. And can you read numbers? Yeah. What number is that? 11, 6, 15. So on November 6, 2015, is that the day you gave your factual proffer? Yes. Are these the signatures? Is that your name? And these are the initials? Yes, sir. At this time, Judge, I'll move Defense Exhibit 2 under Garcia into evidence. Sir. Objection. Hearsay. For impeachment of this issue. I, I sustain the objection at this point in time. I, I fail to see the relevance, but move on, Mr. Stangan. Do you recall me asking you if you had the crimes associated with your factual proffer on your record? Yes, sir. And you told me that even though it's on your record, that you didn't do some of these crimes. Is that correct? Yeah, I told you that. You told me that, right? Yeah. Okay. And the document that I just showed you, did your lawyer, when he went over it with you, indicate that there's a portion that says, I agree with all the facts set forth in the factual proffer? Yes, sir. Okay. And also, when you took your plea of guilty in front of a federal judge, did he read this factual proffer to you? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Did. Word for word, right? Uh, not word for word, but he told me. He explained to me. Okay. And it's the same the objection, Mr. Sangan. Let's move on. Which objection, Your so, Honor? I found it's not relevant. Move on. Give me just one second, Judge. Sure. All right. All right. Mr. Garcia, I'm sorry, Mr. Rivera, have you ever uh, used your position as a leader in the Latin Kings to recruit other Latin Kings to help you further any violent crimes? Yes, sir. And relevance. Overruled. Yes, you can sir. answer that. Well, I got a question for you. I'm here for another indictment. Well, Judge, with all, uh, sorry, Judge, the, could, I'm objecting to the, to the witness asking questions of the attorney. Ask another question. So if you could answer that, the, the question that I just asked you. Ask, if you, a, ask your question again, please. Sure, no problem. Mr. Rivera, have you ever instilled the use of other Latin kings to further any kind of violent criminal act? Yes, sir. Okay. In fact... In the one month that your phone had a wire intercept, you attempted three separate violent acts reaching out to other fellow Latin kings. Isn't that correct? Objection. Yes, relevance. All of rule the objection. So you can answer that question. Yes, sir. So in a 30-day period... You've asked it once. Thank He's you, Judge. Yes, once. sir. We don't need to do it twice. No problem, Judge. Thank you. And in the future, if I refer to other fellow kings, does every fellow king have the word king prior to a nickname or a designation? Yes, sir. So the person that you were talking about earlier, Anthony, um, was it Rever uh Torres. Anthony Torres. Did he have a king name? Hivaro. Hivaro. And is he still alive? He's dead, sir. Did he die here in South Florida? I was in prison when I found out. Um, do you know where he died? No. Uh, do you know how he died? I heard a motorcycle accident. And this is 
the individual that you're claiming you called to find my client when Katie called you, right? Yes, sir. Katie is Sigfredo's wife, as you describe her, right? Yes, sir. She has his numbers, right? Yes, sir. You have his numbers, right? Yes, sir. And just for the record, Sigfredo had multiple phones at all times, correct? Yes, sir. All right. So let's get to... Let's get to June 4th, okay? Or let's actually, let's get to June 3rd. Do you remember what time Sigfredo came up to you and told you that he had a job for you in Tallahassee? That was late night, maybe like about 10, 11 o'clock at night, somewhere around there. Okay. And what time did you guys hit the road? Excuse me? What time did you guys get on the road? Right away. Right away. Okay. So... Let's just be, let's just go ahead and say around 11 o'clock. Does that sound about right? Maybe. I can't really remember the time, but I'm saying like between 9 to 11, it was out of the way. Okay. 9 to 11 p.m. Yes, sir. And this is when Secreto Garcia came to you with a rented, was it a Nissan? I think it was. Okay. But you didn't rent the car there that day, correct? Nope. And he came to you and it told you you had a job, right? Yes. Okay. And when did he tell you you had that job? In my house. Okay. And from there, and you went and you got a gun, right? I can't remember if it was the same day or not. Well, let me ask it this way. You had guns at your disposal, right? Yes, sir. Okay. You're a Latin king. You can call. Did you have your own personal firearm? No, I went and bought one. Let me let me see if I if I didn't ask that question correctly. Did you have your own piece? Did you have your own firearm for your own protection prior to the day? I always kept one. You always kept. One. Yeah. Okay. So you had your own gun, right? Luis Rivera's gun, right? Yes, sir. But you choose not. You chose not to take that gun. Because you wanted to find another gun. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Because wouldn't that be a smarter thing to do? Have a firearm if you're going to commit, whether it's a home invasion or a murder, that nobody knows is yours, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So, did you call one of your Latin King brothers to get a gun? No. no. Where'd you go? To the corner. To the corner? Like in the hood? In the hood. Okay. And... So you got a gun from a guy in the corner. White guy or black guy? Black, black guy. Black guy. So a black guy in the hood, you walked up to him and said, I need a piece, right? Yes, sir. Would it be safe to say, well, let me ask you this. In your Latin King Manifesto, does it talk about not involving non-Latin kings to ensure integrity within your organization? Are we here for the murder case or for the Latin King case? I think it's the same thing. No, it's not. Okay, so answer my question. Don't answer my question with a question. It's not. What are you talking about? You keep talking about the Latin Kings. It ain't got nothing to do with well, the murder. Well, hold on. But, the but murder. you're King Tato, right? Yeah, but it don't got nothing to do with the murder. According to you, right? Because if you were... Wait, if wait, you wait, were wait, wait a minute. Stop. Ask another question, just saying it then. Oh. Ask, answer the question, Is please. there a portion of the Latin King Manifesto which suggests that if you were to buy a, a gun to commit a crime, you'd buy it from another king to make sure you don't get in trouble? No. You can buy it from wherever you want to buy it from. You've been a leader of this organization since you were 15 years old, right? Yes, sir. Right. And so you understand, I mean, you're cooperating now, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so you understand there's informants and cooperators everywhere, right? Yes, sir. Correct? Yes, sir. Could be a stranger, could allegedly be your best friend, right? Yes, sir. So instead of calling one of your hundred gang member brothers, <laughs> where you are the king of the castle, 
the line of the jungle, you choose to go to the hood and ask the stranger for a gun. That's your testimony? Yes, sir, because okay. they don't got nothing to do with what I'm, what I'm about to do. So you go, and you get this firearm. Does the gun come with bullets at least? No. You have to buy bullets separately? Yes, sir. All right. Kind of like a toy without batteries? Yeah, you can okay. say that. So did you go, where'd you go buy the bullets? In a gun store. So you didn't ask the same guy on the corner to throw you some bullets in? No. Okay. So you go to the gun store, and do you buy a pack of bullets? Uh, single bullets. You buy, you buy you buy single bullets? And is this regulated by the person that owns the firearm store? No. No? So you can just go buy bullets? You don't have to give ID or anything? Never gave my ID. And you bought a single bullet? No, we bought a few bullets. You bought three bullets? A few bullets, like, 50, I'm sorry. like 15 I, bullets. Oh, you want me to give you the number correct? Well, it's kind of hard to hear you sometimes. So f 15 bullets? Yeah. Did you call Garcia and ask him if he needed some bullets too? Oh, he was with me. He was with you? Yeah. Do you know what time it was that you went to the... So Garcia was with you when you went to the hood? To what? get the gun? No. Okay. Which car did you use to go to the hood? My car. What kind of car is that? I had an old Mercedes. An old Mercedes? Yeah. Okay. So you drive your own car to the hood. At this time, you already knew you needed you needed the, the, the gun to commit this to commit whatever crime you thought was going that you were gonna do, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And you chose and, and Garcia's right there with a the rental car, right? Right? When I bought the gun? Right. When I, I mean, bought the gun, he was with a come on, come, come back, come back, come, come okay. back with me, man. After Garcia told you he had a job to do, how long after that did you go get the gun immediately? I can't remember. Okay. I think I told you that already. Well, I'm just trying to create a timeline. Yeah, but you, you're going back and forth trying to confuse me. We're not going to do that. Just come on. I, I'm not trying to confuse I'm trying. I'm trying to ask a very simple question. He tells you you have a job, right? Right? Yeah. Okay. You assume this is a violent job, right? That's going to require you to get a firearm, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, you go from where you live. Are you living with Jessica at the time, or are you on your Miami Beach house? I live with Jessica. Okay. So you go, it's 135th Street? Yes, sir. So where'd you go? The Pork and Bees? Which hood did you go to? It's right around the corners. I live in the hood, man. Okay. So you go down the street in your car, right? Yes, sir. And you buy a firearm? Yes, sir. And then you come back? And get in the car with Garcia, and then you go buy bullets? Now you confused me right there, though. <clears throat> I think I went with Garcia in the car. Okay. I can't remember. I okay. can't remember. Okay, now you can. Okay. So after you get the bullets, do you guys head up north? We got the bullets the next day, man. Okay. Let me refresh my memory. You're going back and forth. No, listen, me. take your time. Take your time. <laughs> we got nothing but time. We got 19 years. Can't take that long. Yeah. Ask a question. Come on. You got a citation on June 4th in the morning, right? The prosecution showed you? Yeah. Okay. Did you get the gun on June 3rd or June 2nd? I already had the gun going up there. That wasn't my question, sir. My question is, after Mr... Garcia allegedly told you about this purported job. You said that you went to get a gun, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Did he tell you about this job the night of or the day before you left going north? No, the same night he told me about it. Okay. The same night. So you went down the corner, got the gun, and then got your bullets and then headed up north, right? Yes, sir. You testified originally on direct, direct examination that he drove, right? Yes, sir. And then the prosecutor showed you a ticket, and then you said, well, we had to switch out, right? Yes, sir. 
Is it your testimony? Well, let me ask you this. Was, were you and Garcia drinking on your way up north? Every time. Every time, okay? That's not in Coke. Okay, well, that's what I'm getting to. And you and Garcia were drinking and driving, right? Yes, sir. Snorting cocaine? Yes, sir. Who was snorting mo more coke, you or Sigfredo? Sigfredo. I'm sorry, Mr. Garcia, I apologize. Sir. Mr. Garcia, who was doing more coke, you or him? Him. Okay, like a little bit or a lot more? <laughs> Just a, a lot not a little bit more. A little bit more. How much cocaine did you and Mr. Garcia go through from Miami to Gainesville? Can't remember. And a, a gram? I can't remember. Two grams? I can't remember, sir. How much did you take up there? I don't remember. About an eight ball sound right? Maybe a little bit more, probably. Okay. So a little bit more than eight balls, how many grams? 3.5. Uh, so 3.5 is one eight ball, so you took a little bit more. So let's say would about five grams sound about right? Probably. So it's your testimony that, as an experienced gang member, you get in a rental car. Sounds with, like we're about to repeat what's been said. We're not going to keep repeating everything twice. Let's move on, please. Okay. In, your, in, in the car that you were driving, you had been drinking alcohol. There were little alcohol bottles. Yes, sir. Okay. When you got pulled over by the police, you were driving, right? Obviously, you got the ticket, right? Yes, sir. Did you check to see if you had any remnants of cocaine powder on your nose? Not at all. What about uh, Mr. Garcia? Did you look to see if he had any remnants of co cocaine on his nose? No. And in the car are two firearms? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The location on your driver's license. I think this will be better. Sorry, Judge. The location on your driver's license as your address is 1805 Normandy Drive, Apartment 3. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That's in Miami Beach, Florida. Is that correct? Yes, sir. How long had you lived in Miami Beach? My whole life. You are born April 25th, 1983? Yes, sir. You're a Hispanic male and you're five foot four? Yes, sir. And the citation is going 90 miles an hour in a 70 mile an hour zone, correct? Yes, sir. So in conjunction to all the things that I've already described, the firearms, the drugs, the empty bottles, you were going 90 miles an hour at nine o'clock in the morning, correct? Yes, sir. Now, the officer that pulled you over is a Florida. Was it a Florida? It was a FHP, Florida Highway Patrol. Yeah, I think so. At any point, did he ask you to exit the vehicle to determine if he needed to conduct field sobriety exercises? No, sir. Did you smoke any marijuana in the car? No, sir. Did you take any marijuana with you? No, sir. So it's you and you and Mr. Garcia in a rental car with all the contraband we, we discussed and Trooper Downing just issues you a citation for speeding, correct? Yes, sir. And it was at 9, 12 a.m., correct? 
Yes, sir. Now, that citation took place Right here. I-75 northbound, mile marker 374. Is that correct? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and move that in for you. He's telling me where to go. I don't even know where was that. And who's he? Garcia. Garcia. Did he have his GPS on his phone? Uh, in his brain. In his brain. Had you ever been up to Tallahassee with, with Mr. Garcia before? Never in my life. And it was your testimony earlier that Mr. Garcia never utilized his cell phone GPS. Is that correct? No. And as you indicated to the members of this jury, he was right next to you. If he was using his phone, you would have been able to see that he was using his phone for GPS, correct? Yes, sir. And he was able to get you not only from Miami, Florida to, to Tallahassee, but to drive around in Tallahassee to the appropriate locations. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Do you know roughly how far mile, mark, mile marker 374 is from Gainesville to Tallahassee? No idea. After you received this citation, who drove? Did you continue driving? Yes, sir. And so, from at least Gainesville to Tallahassee, you drove the rest of the way? Yes, sir. Did you guys still have the alcohol bottles in the, in the, in the Nissan after you got pulled over? Yeah. It was in a brown paper bag. Brown paper bag. You didn't think to throw it out afterwards? No, it didn't even cross my mind. How many drinks would you say that you had consumed... I can't remember that. Was it one? I can't remember that, sir. Was it two? Let's move on. Let's do things. What about Mr. Garcia? Were you watching how many alcoholic beverages he was consuming? Not at all. How many alcoholic beverages, how many little bottles did you guys buy? Bought a bunch. I just can't remember how many. Give me a rough estimate of what I a bunch I can't remember was. how many, sir. Multiple? That means more than more than two? Of course, it's more than two, but I can't remember how many. And do you remember how long it took to drive from Miami to Gainesville? Uh, I don't know. It took a couple of hours. I mean, a bunch of hours. I don't remember, though. And during that time, did you guys consume all the alcohol beverages that you had from Miami to Gainesville? Or did you have more alcohol after you got pulled over? No, I think we had drank them all already. So when you get to Tallahassee, and you're still driving, right? Yes, sir. Where do you go on, on June 4th, the same day of the citation? We went straight to the hotel. Okay. Then we, went to, we went to go rent a hotel that day. You went to rent a hotel. Okay. And did you pick the hotel, or did Mr. Garcia pick the hotel? Garcia picked the hotel. Do you remember which exit you guys took off the highway? No, sir. You were driving, though, right? Yes, sir. And how much of the cocaine did you have left? Do you remember? No, I can't remember. You think you had burned through most of it? Probably. And would it be a fair assessment to say that you hadn't slept all night? Yeah, I didn't sleep. Okay. And the night before, you didn't know that this was going to be uh, occurring, right? You found out that's that, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So, 
if you had been up all day and all night, and you con- correct, and you consumed multiple alcoholic beverages, correct? Yes, sir. And you and Mr. Garcia had consumed multiple grams of cocaine. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So, it's also your testimony that somewhere after Orlando, that Mr. Garcia, according to you, tells you that this is a homicide. Right? Is that first trip or the second trip? First trip. Okay. Right? Yes, sir. That's when you find out it's a, it's a homicide. That's I just want to make sure, sir. Okay. And it's your testimony to these jurors that he told you that he's going to give you either 30 or 35 stacks, right? Yes, sir. Okay. It's also been your testimony to this jury that you believed that he thought that you were going to do the shooting, right? Yes, sir. And just for the record... Your testimony is that you did not do the shooting, correct? Yes, sir. Did you still receive the same amount of money? Yes, sir. So for not committing the act that you were hired to do, right? Because it's your testimony that Secreto Garcia, Mr. Garcia, hired you to commit this murder, not to be your tag along, that he still paid you the amount of money that he told you that he'd pay you at the beginning, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So he didn't tell you, hey, listen, I thought you were going to actually do the murder, and I had to do it, so I'm going to give you, man, I'll give you 10 stacks for two rides, right? Yeah. So you got $35,000 for two rides from Miami to Tallahassee, yes, right? Sir. Right? Yes, sir. When you find a good stopping point, Mr. Sanders, I can stop right I now. I think the jury's probably had enough for the day. Yes, Judge. I mean, I wouldn't say it's stop right this moment, just... Uh, absolutely. If you point. think the jury's done for the day, we'll we'll pick back up tomorrow. My pleasure. So it's decent. That's fine. Point. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, I think probably reach a point where things are uh, hard to keep your concentration. Don't discuss the case with anyone. Don't let anyone discuss the case with you. Uh, 8.45 tomorrow. I guess we probably know the drill pretty well by now. Um, we'll see you all in the morning. Either side, have any issues? No, Your Honor. Just a time for tomorrow? It's Same time every day, 8.30. Just checking, just want to make All sure. Right. Um, we need to resolve the discovery uh, issue. If the state's going to pursue putting in the list, I need to see some showing that the defense has been uh, Provided that discovery, which is what I understood the state was seeing, we'll take that up at 8.30. Um, anything else from anybody? Your Honor, on behalf of Ms. McDonnell, I know you had said that you had wanted to see the attorneys for Mr. Rivera tomorrow morning. Is that still going yeah, to Yeah, I'd forgotten we did that. Do we, do we have the Collins coming at 8.30? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. We'll deal with that, too. All right. 8.30. Thank you.